Hi, I am definitely overdue for an update on the HON3 Rio Grande Southern and basically anything that I've been doing hobby-wise. So it is now November 4th, 2023, and I know it's been a very long time since I've done a video. Uh, I think the last one I did was maybe six months ago, and that was just a, a quick uh, shot of a new brass engine. Um, so uh, there have been a lot of changes both to the layout and to my personal life. Uh, with regard to the latter, um, I did start a new full-time job back in April. It is full-time work from home, but the hours are relatively long, so I am uh, maybe not doing quite as much hobby work as I had been previously, but that's okay. Um, means I can afford more brass, right? Uh, and then the other big ticket item is that my wife and I are now empty nesters. We sent our youngest son off to college uh, just this past fall. Uh, he's going to Penn State, which is where my wife and I went. Uh, so we have, uh, we're uh, three out of four for Penn Staters. My other boy goes to Colorado School of Mines. And uh, so we're empty nesters now, which means that, uh, you know, I should have more hobby time. Uh, either way, I have been up to quite a bit, and I'm going to give you uh, sort of at the end of the video a little bit surprised that my uh, my hobby work is kind of going in a new direction. The RGS is staying exactly where it is. It's not going anywhere, but uh, I am tinkering in something new. By the way, I do want to point out, too, that uh, I just realized that uh, I kind of essentially finished this layout. I say finished, but, you know, all the track was in place and there was basic scenery in place about five years ago. So this layout is not as new as it had been and it's starting to show, show its age. There's some places where, you know, the bench work has contracted and so on due to climate, uh, you know, uh, humidity changes and so on. But uh, nevertheless, it's never done and I've been doing quite a bit of work on it and I'm anxious to show you what I've been up to. So let's have a look. Okay, last time we talked about this extensive backdrop that I had done for Rico. And again, these are the mountains that are literally there behind Rico. But I went ahead and worked with Lark Products, Bill from Lark Products, to have most of these backdrops that you may remember as being a lot shorter, to have them redone and to have them done much bigger, much taller. So the, the Ofer needles stand a little over two feet above the railhead, which I, I love kind of how they dominate the scene, just like the real thing. Um, some of my original hand-printed backdrops are still in place. For example, um, this is the Lizard Head Peak, which uh, I took that photograph myself and I wanted to reuse that here on the layout. So I tried to do what I could to kind of color fade it and match the foreground colors. Another important backdrop step for me was increasing the height of Log Hill Mesa on the way out of Ridgeway. I just felt like it needed to dominate the scene more than it had been. So this one's twice the height of the previous backdrop version. Okay, now it's time for new stuff. So, looking in Ridgeway Yard, you can see some of my new acquisitions. RGS Goose number seven, which I was able to get with DCC and Sound, thanks to uh, Steve Hollenbach. And then behind that, I uh, got this one, number 454, off of, and I, I forget who it was, but uh, off of another, uh, I think it was a Facebook sale, but another K27 from Blackstone. 454 was used briefly on the RGS during World War II, although I think it spent a lot of time on the second district, but it's still a neat uh, engine because it has the round number plate. This is my Blackstone number 401 that I had painted up as RGS 42. Well, as you'll see in a moment, I got a brass model of 42 that runs really well. So I repainted it again, this time as Silverton Northern number four. And the only modification I made to it is on the front end where I added a uh, an arc headlamp, which works, and a brass number plate I had left over from Toma Locomotive Works. So this one is, eh, I mean, there's a lot of ways in which it's not accurate for number four, but uh, it's, a, it's a neat looking model anyway, so I'm happy to have more representation of the Silverton short lines on my layout. Speaking of RGS 42, this is the Key Imports Brass number 42. Now I managed to get a hold of it on eBay where it had already been upgraded with DCC and sound, although had some confusion because there is a separate decoder for motor control and a decoder for sound control. So programming this thing is, <laughs> it's a challenge. Anyway, um, I didn't really like the paint job that much, so I repainted it. And uh, so you can see it's a little bit more accurate for that brief period during World War II before it got the round headlight off of, I believe, RGS-22. Uh, but had the Sunrise Herald and, of course, the Defense Supplies Corporation stencils. And you can flip back uh, to my previous video and see how she sounds and, and, and runs. 
runs. Uh, speaking, it's parked here in Placerville. So speaking of Placerville, I'm gonna zoom out. Um, lots to look at in Placerville. So I got tired of pretending there was some kind of an aerial tramway that was feeding the uh, Primos Chemical Company uh, tipple. So uh, Berkshire Valley Models makes uh, towers and ore cars and so on, or the, uh, sorry, the ore buckets. So I went ahead and installed that. So some changes there at Placerville for the mine. And I'm gonna zoom in over here in town. So uh, if you are in HON3, or actually for that matter, any scale in narrow gauge, you might have noticed newcomer uh, McCarville models. So McCarville Studios, and I had already built the McCarville yard office for Ridgeway. So I've kind of been buying up his kits kind of left and right. I also had uh, built his Placerville barn, which is over here. But uh, he recently uh, he recently offered the post office for Placerville, which uh, finally I got rid of the plastic Walters building that had been there. And then this is another to the left of the store house that sat in Placerville. I am, there's one more house kit for Placerville that he's made that I plan to get. And I'm gonna put it right here where those trees are because that's where it would have been in the real town of Placerville. And also in Placerville, I decided, I kind of wanted to deal with how flat the scenery was in the front. I didn't much care for it. So I added some sort of hills and texture to the scenery. And then I added a rock wall to blend with the backdrop to kind of give it a little more texture. I really wanted more sort of rocky texture to the layout. And uh, so I added a foam rock wall. An additional acquisition, and this one I got at the uh, National Air Gauge Convention that was here in Denver, is number 343. So this is uh, another Blackstone C19, and if you're playing along at home, I kind of have an addiction problem with these guys. Uh, they're not the best pullers in the world, but boy, they sure are, sure are good looking, and they do run really well. Um, and so anytime I can find one for 400 or less, they come home with me. And I got this one from Rick's Grand. Uh, he was up at the show in Denver. And speaking of Rick's Grand, he was also at the Pueblo show last year. So there I managed to acquire sort of the piece de resistance that no RDS layout obviously can be complete without. And of course I'm talking about number 20. So this is the precision scale uh, can motor version of number 20 and it came factory painted. And again, I got it from Rick for 400 bucks. I'm like, holy cow, that's, that's an insanely good deal and I couldn't pass it up. And it runs really, really well. Uh, but more importantly, I just got it back from the original whistle stop out in Pasadena where I had Paul install the uh, Tsunami decoder, the uh, Keep Alive, and uh, the speakers, and also a uh, an LED headlight. So, uh, like I said, she runs really well. Oh, he also put some weight in there to help the pulling power. The only challenge we have right now, she has a little bit of a lurch at slower speeds, and uh, I'm still kind of thinking that might be the valve gear, sort of the, the, uh, the way the valve gear is set up. So we're gonna work on that a little bit more, but it does run really, really well, and I'll run it here for you in a little bit. Moving on to Ofer, you can see uh, some scenery work that's been done. You might uh, notice the Grand Central Gym's aspen trees that are sort of filling in where I used to have a lot of super trees that had, uh, I guess I didn't really do a good enough job in preserving the armatures because they got brittle in the Colorado climate and they sort of kind of crumbled. So I've done some work there. Uh, these Grand Central Gem trees, they're, they're not cheap, but they look really good. And oh, by the way, you can often find good deals on them on eBay or at train shows and so on. So I've been sort of piecemeal replacing them. Also, the turnout here had to be replaced. I had an 18 and 16 inch radius curve turnout there uh, that really represented a pinch point on the layout. It was the tightest mainline curvature I had. And I had some gauge issues. So what I've gone ahead and done is I have replaced that. I had these rails custom soldered for me and I don't exactly remember who I got them from, but if I remember or if I can find the email, I pull it, I'll put it in the comments. But this is a much broader curve now. I have far fewer operational issues through here. And lastly, you can see some scenery work with regard to the talus slope. That's a little more representative of what you would have seen. So I removed some trees and I added more rock work to make it feel a little more like the real Ofer. The previous Ofer Depot was a classic miniatures kit that I had purchased already built at the 2017 Narrow Gauge Convention uh, when it was here in Denver. And I had to do some work to it to try to bring it up to sort of uh, the same standard of the other depots where I had 
uh, repainted it, de-weathered it, detailed it, and so on. But unfortunately, it just never really worked as well as I wanted it to. So this, what you're looking at here, is the Banta kit. So I went in and I built the Banta kit uh, up to the sort of the same standard of the structures, the, the depots at Ridgeway and Placerville, which are of course from rags to riches. And I got it done just in time for the narrow gauge convention in 2023, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So for that, you can tell that, you know, it's, it's maybe, maybe you don't see the difference immediately if you've seen pictures of the layout previously, but if you get up close, you can tell. And oh, by the way, I detailed the front can't see it from here. You can see it on a flat car camera, but I added all the proper signage and the train order board and everything to the front end of the building as well. So some of the last bit of work that I've done at Ofer, I did mention I wanted more rock work and talus on the layout uh, because that's really kind of what we think about for the northern end of the RGS or the first district. Um, so this area, if you recall from previous videos, used to be just trees and grass. And uh, so I have added quite a bit of rock face, more talus slopes and so on. And while this is not exactly representative of what was here because at Ofer the Silver Bell Mine would have been up on a hill up here, there's a lot of this sort of thing on the high line in this direction coming out of Ofer. So I wanted something to kind of give that feel and also serve as a scene break before we move over into Lizard Head, which is over here. So this is, uh, this is what I've done, just added quite a bit of, of rock work here and just given it this sort of um, mountainous, rocky vibe. So trains coming into Ofer from the Durango end would have this view coming through the rock cut, which is pretty consistent with what you would have seen on the real RGS. So previous videos, I talked about putting the coal pockets in here at Rico and it's still something I want to do. So I had a conversation with the Crystal River folks who are making those kits now in SN3. They actually dropped by to visit the layout during the 2023 National Narragage Convention. And so we had the conversation about that and uh, I need to kind of close the loop with them, but they may very well fire me up an HO version of the kit. And if that is, if that actually works out, then you will see the coal pockets here. But in the short term, I don't really have plans to scratch build them. So I'm going to work with them and see if they can uh, they can fire up a kit for me. But anyway, I think it's probably time to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the narrow gauge convention. So during the 43rd National Narrow Gauge Convention hosted in Denver, my layout was on the tour. And so we actually had about 150 people from places as far away as New Zealand come and visit the layout. And it was great. Um, having folks come in and the layout actually performed really well. We went almost the entire, so it was for two days, four hours each. And we went almost the entire time without any sort of stalls or derailment problems. I think at one point, somebody had bumped their head on the duck under and uh, that led to a derailment, but otherwise uh, the layout behaved very well. Now, I did have kind of my star players out on the route, but uh, like I said, we had about 150 people come visit the layout and it was really wonderful to get to share uh, my passion for the Rio Grande Southern with so many people, many of whom were my heroes. So folks that uh, that I had read their work, I follow them on Facebook and on YouTube, and they got to see my layout in person. So a little bit of a sort of fanboy kind of thing happening there. So with that, a uh, few more minor updates I'm going to call it. Worth noting that this key brass number 42 had been upgraded with a can motor, so yay me. Okay, so last uh, last little bits here. 
This is the N-Scale Colorado Midland, which uh, if you've seen my other videos, you've seen uh, seen this layout. It's essentially done. I'm working on a little N-Scale uh, version of the Rio Grande Southern Sand House for basalt here. Um, I'm not gonna obviously model it as run down as it would have been on the RGS. But other than that, it's essentially a done deal. So, love this little layout. I've taken it to a couple shows. It seems to be real popular, especially here in Colorado Springs because the Midland is a hometown road. But uh, you know, I have two pretty much finished layouts that I'm just kind of doing a little tinkering and upgrading with. So, can't help myself. I'm starting something new. HON30. So this is the, uh, these are the little mini trains, uh, Fiddletown and Copperopolis uh, engines and cars. I've also got some kits from uh, formerly Marsh Creek. Uh, I think it's, uh, what is it, Blue Mountain, uh, I think is making them now. Uh, but they are uh, box cars and gondola cars. Um, and you can see some of the sort of Wild West structures that I'm starting to build for this layout here. Uh, for what it's worth, I'm gonna basically build a complete fantasy Wild West layout. So, chances are if you subscribe to my channel, you probably also subscribe to Dave Meek's Thunder Mesa layout. And his ON30 Wild West stuff has just gotten me so hooked. I don't have a lot of room for, eight, for ON30, but everybody's got room for HON30. So I'm gonna build a little two by four foot portable layout that fits on a Costco banquet table. And uh, I've got uh, quite a bit of the scenery stuff and uh, some, all the track that I need already squared away for this. And it's just a matter of finding the time to build it. But uh, this is gonna be a complete fantasy Wild West, like think of Monument Valley kind of scenery. Um, no prototype in mind. I don't even have a name for the layout yet. But, uh, and actually it's probably worth showing you, this is the train room here. It's a spare bedroom where I keep all of the train stuff that doesn't fit in the uh, RGS space. This is a convertible sofa so people can sleep down here. I've got the end scale. I've got all my wall art. These two paintings, by the way, well, the painting and the drawing I did myself. Uh, I think I did this painting in college and the drawing I did in high school. And uh, you can see more of the sort of train decor. Plus, I used to be a Civil War reenactor, so that was my unit, the 148th Pennsylvania Volunteers, and here is the Irish Brigade at Antietam marching on the Sunken Road. So, And then I've got just sort of some old, uh, these are railroad lanterns, and then a marker lamp from the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railway. So some of these are, I think, two are, at least one is Pensy, and one of the lanterns is Long Island Railroad. So this is, uh, and then of course back in here is my mad scientist laboratory workshop. I'm not even going to show it to you because it's a no state to look at, but it is a walk-in closet that runs the entire length of this wall. So that's where I uh, I do all my, I was going to say magic, but uh, I turn messes into less messy messes. All right, well, thanks for joining me, and I'm, I'm sorry I haven't really been uh, especially good at providing regular updates, but uh, hopefully this will scratch the itch for a little while, and uh, hopefully I'll find the time to make more videos.